makes a chocolate pudding. And just about everybody makes it the same way. They take a box of mighty fine or jello chocolate pudding mix, add the milk, and stir it. I was always intrigued when I was a child at the way this loose liquid magically at some point thickened and became pudding. Now, as I started looking for more healthful ways of making common foods for my children, I started looking at the ingredients list of Jell-O and Mighty Fine Puddings, and I was not happy with what I found. And for example, these I just downloaded from the internet, so these are the current ingredients. Mighty Fine does have sugar, cornstarch, and cocoa, and those are the same ingredients in Jell-O also, and as you'll see, those are the basic ones for cornstarch pudding. However, Mighty Fine also has food starch, modified, salt, partially hydrogenated cottonseed and soybean oils, artificial flavors, calcium carrageenan, I guess that's the way you say it for texture, artificial color, yellow three, yellow six, red and blue one, milk, autolyzed yeast extract, which contains glutamate, and soy flour. The jello is very similar, but they don't even use cornstarch. They thicken it with disodium phosphate and modified food starch. Less than 2% of natural and artificial flavor, but not telling you how much of each. Salt, tetrasodium pyrophosphate for thickening, mono and diglycerides to prevent foaming, a whole bunch of artificial colors about the same as Mighty Fine, and BHA, a preservative. Now, most of this is not necessary. It's probably necessary for long, long shelf life, but these kind, the puddings like chocolate pudding, which are cornstarch puddings, are very simple to make. And you can make it using very simple ingredients, a good cocoa, some cornstarch, sugar, milk, and at the end, some vanilla. I got my inspiration for my recipe, which has been tweaked to my taste, which gives a very nice, robust tasting pudding, from two sources both vintage cookbooks, Better Than Store Bought, which was a lovely cookbook, and the first to really show you how you could make things at home that you never thought you could, like mustard and chocolate pudding. And another vintage cookbook, the Moosewood Restaurant low-fat cookbook, which has a whole bunch of lovely vegetarian recipes. Moosewood Restaurant is located in Ithaca, New York. I've never been there. I am not vegetarian even though I do like my fruit and veggies. But they had a chocolate pudding recipe that was a good starting point. I tweaked it to get it a little bit more to my taste. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how easy it is, and with very little more effort than opening up the package and getting all of those unwanted additives. I mean, blue, red, yellow food coloring, which I suppose gives it that dark chocolatey color, which you can get by using dark chocolatey, which I think is infinitely preferable. So here's the way you do it. We start out by mixing three simple ingredients. A quarter cup of granulated sugar. And yeah, you really can't do this without granulated sugar. So that's you know not strictly healthful, but that's the way it is. Three tablespoons, this is my hand leveler, of cornstarch. And yes, I did wash my hands. And the same amount of cocoa. Now, I prefer a Dutch processed cocoa, which is processed with alkali. It gives it a little richer flavor, but any unsweetened cocoa will work. Make sure you get unsweetened cocoa and not a mix, a cocoa mix which has sugar in it and dried milk powder. You don't want that. Okay, and um, we add three tablespoons of the cocoa. And those are our dried. Let me get them out of the way before I knock into them. Make more of a mess than I've done already. 
All right, now that I have these in my pan, I'm going to whisk them together. I'm using a special whisk since this is a non-stick pot. This whisk is coated with silicon, so it will take heat and also is not damaging. If you're using a pot that's not non-stick, you can use any whisk. And we try to get it pretty well mixed, but you don't need to get it completely mixed. All right, now I'm going to add two cups of milk. I'm using a 1% low-fat milk. You can use whole milk, you can use 2%. You can even use skim milk, but the fat does give it some body and flavor. And I find that there's a very big difference between the 1% and the fat-free or skim milk, so that we tend to go with the 1%. The caloric difference is negligible, the fat difference is negligible, and it's much more versatile. It also tastes better. All right, so I'm mixing it up. Now, one of the things you need to watch out for with a whisk is that things tend to hide in the corners and the whisk doesn't get into the corners. So it's a good idea to have a spoon handy just to go around into the corners, scrape up those little bits that didn't want to get mixed. We're going to use this spoon later. So let me just put it over here where it doesn't drip. I do have occasional moments of neatness. And I'm going to mix it up until it's quite blended. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to put it on the stove and cook it at medium heat, stirring constantly, just as you would conventional boxed pudding. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to reduce the heat and cook it for maybe about another three minutes. You want to be careful that it doesn't stick on the bottom and burn once it thickens. And what this will do is cook out any raw cornstarch flavor. If you do Asian cooking and use cornstarch as a thickener, you know that once you add it, you have to cook it a bit until it thickens, and that gets rid of the flavor of the cornstarch flavor that you don't want. So I'm going to heat this up now. And once it comes to boil, as I said, I'll reduce it, I'll thicken it, and at that point, I'll come back and show you what the next step is. The pudding is cooked. I brought it to a boil, and once it came to a boil, and I brought it to a boil over medium heat, I lowered the heat, I stirred very aggressively to make sure nothing would stick to the bottom, and I cooked it on low heat for about another three minutes, as I had mentioned earlier, to get rid of any cornstarch raw flavor. And now I'm going to remove this from the heat. At this point, it's thickened. It's not very, very thick, but it will thicken up as it cools. I'm removing it from the heat, and I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla coming out of my obviously well-used and almost empty bottle of pure vanilla. We add the vanilla at the end after it's off the heat because if we added it too early, the alcohol and flavor would dissipate. So flavorings like this are invariably added after the actual cooking is done. All right, so when this is all mixed, I'm going to put it into a bowl. This is a heat-proof Pyrex bowl. I will scrape out almost all of this, and I promised my videographer that he could clean it out, so as a courtesy, I will not remove all the pudding. Now, if you like the skin on top of your pudding, then leave it as is. If you'd rather have your pudding with no skin on top, then take a piece of plastic wrap and put it right on the top surface of the pudding, and it'll cool without a top skin. So it's an easy enough thing to do. Either way you do it, it'll be fine. I let this cool just a little bit at room temperature. And then I'll put it in the fridge for final cooling, although some people prefer to eat it nice and warm right out of the pot. Of course, this, the scrapings are the best part. I do hope you give this a try. People are very impressed. I brought, brought bowls of chocolate pudding as house gifts or for dinner. And everyone is very amazed that you really can make it yourself. Great for kids to do. And it really is a healthful version. And you can control the flavoring as you want by using the cocoa that you want, 
You might try some instant espresso and upping the sugar a little bit if you want to get a bit of a mocha flavor in. You can play around with it and enjoy it. Simple to make, delicious, and relatively nutritious as far as desserts go. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have fun with this.